Hello everyone, this is Michael with AA Medical Store. Uh, another video educational series on just basic video, video components and what makes up a laparoscopy tower versus an arthroscopy tower. So uh, in the video platform or the video world, there's really three things that you wanna focus on. Number one is a source, right? So what's considered a source? A source is anything that outputs a video signal. In our case, and what we use a lot of, is gonna be a video camera system or a camera control box, which is called a CCU. That CCU outputs a video signal. What type of video signal? It can output a composite, can output an S video, or it can output a DVI signal. Those signals then can either go to a device. What's a device? A device can be something as simple as a DVD, player, a DVD burner, or in Stryker's case, and most manufacturers' cases, it's a digital captioning unit. And uh, Stryker calls theirs the SDC. And they have many different versions, but the SDC stands for Stryker Digital Capture. Basically, it's a device that allows you to take pictures, burn video, and uh, then it's also a pass-through to what the final component is, is a display. So again, to break it down and keep it simple, you have a source, you have devices, and you have displays. So once you kind of know those three basic principles, then adding components as you go along makes it a little bit easier. So in the case that we have set up, we have Stryker's 1588 AIM Platform CCU. To keep it simple and to remember, your 1588 CCU is gonna be your source it outputs a video signal. Then where are we sending that signal? In this case, we're gonna send it to the Stryker Digital Caption, which is the device that's allowing the surgeon to take pictures, do video, kind of document the procedure as they go along. Then it comes out of the device and it goes to the display. So if you look on this, you're gonna say, yeah, Mike, but we see another device. It's gonna be your light source, your L10 light source, right? So again, the light source technically is a device, right? But the light source doesn't play any part of a video, right? Because it doesn't output a signal and it doesn't capture that signal. So you can hook up the CCU to the light source. It would allow it to turn the light source on and off or activate standby mode. You can do that. So the light source is a device, but its only purpose is to give you light. To be able to hook to your endoscope or laparoscope or arthroscope, to then once you insert it into the body, to then be able to see. Now the nice part about the striker is that you can remote control from the striker camera head to activate or stand by the light source. And it's just a USB cable that goes from the CCU to the light source to make those two communicate. Okay, so now that you know the basic components of a video tower, there's certain things that you need to make sure that you can produce an image, right? The main one is gonna be your camera, right? So whatever CCU you have, you need to make sure you have the corresponding camera to go with it. Obviously, the CCU or the camera head is gonna be considered the brain, and then the scope is gonna be considered your eye. So again, depending on what type of procedure you're doing, whether it be a laparoscope with a laparoscopy or an arthroscope with an arthroscopy, you need to make sure you have the right scope to be able to do the right procedure, but that's all gonna start with the camera head. So you have to make sure you have a camera head with the corresponding box. So we're using a 1588 CCU, we're gonna use a 1588 camera head. And basically it's gonna go green arrow to camera arrow up, and we're gonna plug that in. And then when we plug this in, it's gonna give us this image, and then it's also gonna let us know a few things. It's gonna give us kind of the button map function and let us know if we hit these buttons on the top of the camera head, it's gonna do these things. So basically to get rid of that, you're just gonna hit the P like you're taking a picture and it's gonna go away. Now, what type of procedure are we doing? Are we gonna do a laparoscopy 
or we're gonna do an arthroscopy. Those are things that you would have to determine what you're gonna do, and then the needs are gonna be different based on what you have. So if you were doing a laparoscopy, you would need what's called a laparoscope. This one right here is a five millimeter and it's a zero degree laparoscope and it's also green. So this is their aim laparoscope. It's to see the green light during the actual procedure. So hence the green eyepiece, right? So green for green. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the camera and the camera itself is gonna be the body and then on the camera is gonna be what's called the coupler. The coupler allows it to hook to the actual laparoscope or arthroscope, depending on what type of procedure you're doing. So basically what you would do is then hook that in and then your focus ring is right here next to the end where you plugged it in. So now that we have the camera head and the scope hooked up, we have to have a way to get light into the abdomen. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that by using another device which is called a light source. In this case, for this setup, we're using a Stryker L10 light source. So basically, what we have is a laparoscope with a light post, a safe light cable adapter hooked to the camera head, and then we're gonna plug in the light cable into the light source. We're gonna plug the light cable into our adapter, and then we're gonna take the light source off of standby. Now, the light source is off of standby, it's producing a light. So once it goes into the abdomen, you're gonna be able to see that image. If you wouldn't have a light source or you wouldn't have a light cable, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Again, it'd be like walking into a dark room without any lights on and you wouldn't wanna trip and fall over the furniture. So, one of the things you wanna start off with when you're doing any type of video procedure is once you get all the components set up and before you actually start the surgery, you're gonna want the camera to perform a white balance. Why is a white balance important? A white balance is important because it's telling the camera that white is white. And if it knows that white is white, then it's gonna know that red is red, green is green, and blue is blue. Or you're gonna constantly hear it in the industry RGB. So basically what you're doing is trying to tell the camera that white is white. If it knows that white is white, then it knows that every other color in the color spectrum is. But if you don't do a white balance, you'll definitely have some image color reproduction issues uh, could occur. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna put it on something white, you wanna push and hold the camera button, W, and it'll let you know white balance in progress, white balance complete. Now your camera is white balanced, right? And with the camera being white balanced, we can now focus the image and it's almost like we're looking in the actual abdominal cavity. Okay, so now that we know basic video components, uh, sources, devices, and displays, now we can talk about add-ons, right? So we're gonna add on sources, devices, or displays. Um, you're not really gonna add on many sources, but you can add on devices. One of the devices that you can add on in a video platform would be the clarity system. So basically, Stryker has made the clarity system to be able to enhance or digitally enhance video. That's what the device does, that's its sole purpose. It grabs a video signal and it transfers it or outputs it to your display. So again, it's a clarity digital enhancement system uh, and that's a device. When you talk about laparoscopy, right? So we wanna do a laparoscopy. What's the most crucial device that you need in a laparoscopy? It's gonna be an insufflator, right? Because we have to have a way to get the CO2 gas into the abdomen and create that preperitoneal space. How are we gonna do that? The only way we're able to do that is with an insufflator. So when you're building a laparoscopy tower, you wanna make sure it includes an insufflator. Now, if we wanna do an arthroscopy tower, we, we don't do any laparoscopy or laparoscopic procedures at our account. We only do orthopedic or arthroscopy procedures. Some basic components are needed. The first one is gonna be a shaver. If they wanna shave out meniscus, fat pad, tissue, you need a shaver. And I always used to call them the vacuum cleaner, right? So it's on a small tip, 
uh, ranging in size from 2.5 millimeter up to 5.5 millimeter. You put it in the joint space and it allows you to suck out or chew up that tissue and s remove it from the body. So a shaver is what you would need. The other unit that's used in shoulders mostly is gonna be an RF or a radio frequency unit. And basically it's, uh, it's there to either ablate tissue or coagulate tissue. That's the job of the RF unit. And then lastly is gonna be a pump, right? To deliver fluid. Because arthroscopy is a fluid medium, we have to have a way to fill the joint space up with fluid. How do we do that? One of the ways you can do that is with a pump. Now, where this varies from laparoscopy is, there's no real alternative other than the insufflator to deliver CO2 into the abdomen. But there is a way to deliver fluid into a shoulder joint or a knee joint. You don't always need a pump. You can use gravity tubing, and it's just tubing that's hooked to a bag, and the bag is elevated in the air, and then the force of the gravity from the bag then puts the fluid into the joint space. So a lot of folks out there use arthroscopy pumps to manage their fluid during an arthroscopy, but you don't need it to perform an arthroscopy. You do need it for, you do need an insufflator to perform a laparoscopy. So kind of some similar differences, but there are differences there. Again, this is Michael with AA Medical Store. Hopefully it gave you a little bit more information on video systems, video components, sources, devices, and displays. Those are the three main things that you always want to remember that you have uh, when you're dealing with video systems and components. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.